Praise be to God. Good morning, everybody. My name is Abby Elizabeth, and this is the Earthen Vessels channel. This is a channel for Christian women, but anyone is welcome to listen. And praise be to the Most High God, who has given us another day in which we can consider his holy word and learn to walk in his ways. For those of us who speak English, the King James Version of the Holy Bible is the word of God. So I want to talk to you today, my sisters, about blind spots. Blind spots. Now, it's very commonly believed in our time that God is something other than what God himself says that he is. In the word of God, we understand that there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. So God is a spirit. He is holy. No man hath seen him at any time. No man can see him and live. He is invisible, immortal, eternal. He has no beginning and no end. He begat a son in the womb of a virgin of Israel, a human woman, a virgin of Israel. He begat a son in a virgin of Israel, and that son was born without sin, unlike the rest of us. That Son of God is not a deity known as God the Son, and he is not his own father in a sonship role. And Mary did not give birth to a God. Idolatry causes blindness. It causes a person to not be able to see the truth. And there's a few ways that idolatry manifests that we can clearly see. One is when people exalt themselves to be religious authorities and insert themselves between a person and God. They want to be an interpreter of scripture. They want to be a religious expert. And they want to become your mediator. And they want you to go to them to learn how to pray, to, to, to do what they say, to dress as they say to dress, to find out the rules. They want you to do the easy path the broad path that leads to destruction by getting your answers from a person instead of seeking God in his holy word. Hallelujah. So a manifestation of idolatry is religious authorities who exalt themselves as mediators between the people and God, whether it be a Catholic priest or a pastor or someone who calls herself a prophetess, or a, a pastor's wife, or any such thing. We who are Christians understand from the word of God that it's very displeasing unto God when people call themselves by flattering titles. Jesus Christ warned us about this. He told us, call no man father. And yet people go around calling men father all the time. And people have no problem doing that. And the reason why is because they're listening to these false fathers instead of reading the scripture for themselves. Jesus Christ said, if ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. So to know the truth, we have to continue in the word of God. And that's got two parts to it. One, read it. Two, do what it says. Jesus Christ said, My mother and my brethren are these that hear the word of God and do it. And do it. So someone who exalts themselves as a religious authority, calling themselves, you know, apostle so-and-so, or evangelist so-and-so, or prophetess so-and-so. Well, those people are exalting themselves in religious pride, and it's very obvious that what they want is power, money, fame, and the things of this world. And that's what they promise their disciples. So if we become a disciple of a religious authority, we have departed from being a disciple of Jesus Christ because he said that we should continue in his word. So we don't get the word of God watered down and interpreted for us by a religious authority. Rather, any true Christian will refer you and urge you and compel you with all of their heart and sincerity to continue in the word of God. They will not want to be an authority in your life. They won't want to tell you what to do. They will want you to know the living God by abiding in his scriptures. And they will want you to know the truth about who he is and who his son is in the way of salvation according to the scriptures. Hallelujah. So let's go to Job 
chapter 32. To make sure that it's very clear that it is incorrect and rebellious and disobedient and idolatrous for men to call themselves by flattering titles. Job 32, starting in verse 21. Let me not, I pray you, accept any man's person, neither let me give flattering titles unto man. For I know not to give flattering titles, for in so doing my Maker would soon take me away. So those of you who are relatively new to this channel might have come for various reasons. Perhaps you're interested in dressing modestly or in godly principles about marriage and how it is that we as Christian women conduct ourselves in marriage. What marriage actually is. What is something that's pleasing to God in that respect and what isn't pleasing to God in that respect. And I'm here to serve you and I'm glad that you're here. However, if you have not yet understood the basic principle of this channel and of the Word of God, which is that we get our truth from the Holy Scriptures. We don't call people by flattering titles because in so doing, my Maker would soon take me away. So if you're sitting under a ministry where somebody's calling himself Apostle so-and-so or Prophetess so-and-so, or you're, you've been taught to believe that you must be someone who receives the word of God from a religious authority rather than from the mouth of God himself. Then you are someone who is probably greatly deceived. Probably greatly deceived. Now in the body of Christ, of course, there are righteous men who have been appointed by God to lead the flock and to protect the flock from things like false doctrines and religious impostors, and to keep the flock walking along the narrow way and not distracted by the things of the world. Men of God who have been appointed by God to be shepherds for the flock, that does not mean that every single person who says they're a pastor or a shepherd is indeed a pastor or a shepherd. And we read of many false pastors and many false shepherds and many, many religious authorities who did much harm both to all the prophets of God and to the Lord Jesus Christ. It was the religious authorities who crucified the Lord, the Pharisees, the scribes, those who were uh, very educated in the law and they wanted power over the people. Hallelujah. So, Giving people flattering titles is a key indicator that you might be in a situation that you need to depart from. Because we who are Christians understand that there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, and it isn't a religious authority. It isn't some man that's appointed himself to be an authority over a congregation of one kind or the other. This kind of thing is indicative of idolatry, and I'll show you where that is written. Let's go to Job 31. Job 31. To understand what is idolatry. Let's start in verse 24. If I have made gold my hope, or have said to the fine gold, thou art my confidence. So faith in something like money is a kind of idolatry. If I rejoiced because my wealth was great, and because mine hand had gotten much. So someone who is proud of themselves for the things that God has given them, and they start to think, well, I'm the one who did these things. So they forget God. They forget who gave them the blessings. And they exalt themselves instead. Verse 26, if I beheld the sun when it shined or the moon walking in brightness. So this is the false worship of most of the world. 
the idea of the triune godhead, the idea that there's a sun god, a moon goddess, and a reincarnated sun god, that doctrine is the doctrine of worshiping the sun, worshiping the moon, and worshiping uh, Antichrist, a man who will exalt himself as, as God in the temple of God. So that Antichrist religion is founded upon sun worship. The idea that God is a trinity or that God is his own son in a sonship role is the same thing. It exalts Mary or Semiramis or Diana or Ashtoreth to be the mother of God. And that is a false doctrine. Mary, the mother of Jesus Christ, was a woman of Israel. She was a woman of Israel. She was not a goddess of any kind, and she did not give birth to a God-man. She gave birth to the Son of God, and that's what the scripture says. So if I beheld the sun when it shined, or the moon walking in brightness, this has to do with worshiping the host of heaven. And that is what most religious people do, and have always done. Verse 27, and my heart hath been secretly enticed, or my mouth hath kissed my hand. So that's the, the idea of worshiping oneself, one's own will, one's own ideas, one owns one's own righteousness. If my mouth hath kissed my hand, that's self-idolatry, or what is commonly referred to these days as narcissism. Where my mouth hath kissed my hand, this also were an iniquity to be punished by the judge. For I have should, I, pardon me, for I, I should have denied the God that is above. The God that is above. There is one God and Father of all, my sisters. And Jesus Christ, his only begotten Son, had his Father dwelling in him. This is the one true God. God the Father is in the Son. There are not, there are not three thrones that you will stand before on Judgment Day. There is one. And sitting on that throne will be Jesus Christ, the Son of God, with his Father fully abiding in him. There is one God and one mediator between God and men. So if you're sitting under a ministry where a man or a woman has said, you have to do as I tell you to do. I'm the one who will interpret the scripture for you. And you do as I say. That is someone who has exalted themselves as an authority. And they're kissing their own hand. And they're telling you that they're an apostle. They're a prophetess. They're the pastor's wife. You need to do what I say. You need to be subject unto me. Well, that is someone who's rebellious and disobedient. And they're involved in idolatry. So the operation of idolatry is to worship the host of heaven, false concepts or images of what God is instead of what the word says about who God is and who his son is. It's also the operation of self-will run riot. So in the 60s, in the 1960s, it became very popular for people to say, do what feels good. If it feels good, do it. And that is the principal tenet of Satanism. So when people worship themselves and their own ideas and their own will, that is self-idolatry. And whenever we worship a false idea of God, what stands behind it is a devil. And in that case, in the instance of someone worshiping their own will, that is Satanism. That is Satanism. That is when we are worshiping the devil. So a, a human being who desires to know God is subject to, to the word of God. And if they worship God in some other way, then they are involved in worshiping something that is wrong and evil and corrupt. There are not different versions or ideas or interpretations of God that are all valid. And there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Blind spots. When we become a Christian, and the way we become a Christian, of course, is to obey the gospel of the new covenant. This is when we are baptized in water 
in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of our sins. It is not something that happens when somebody sprinkles a baby with water, when somebody puts someone under the water saying, I baptize you in the authority of Jesus Christ, or I baptize you in the in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Ghost, without mentioning the name of Jesus Christ, which is the name of the Father, and the name of the Son, and the name of the Holy Ghost. It is not when someone says to you, die with Christ, rise with Christ. It is not when somebody says, when you're baptized with the Holy Ghost, you're saved, and then we'll dunk you under the water as an outward sign and testimony of your newfound salvation. We're not saved when we receive the Holy Ghost. We are saved from our sins when our sins are remitted by being baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. We are not saved when we say a sinner's prayer, when we come to repentance. We are not saved when we make a confession of Jesus Christ or when we go down to, to a religious altar and say something like, I accept Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior. All of those doctrines are formulated by the enemy to confuse people into thinking that they're saved when they're not. And so if you in that condition, I don't, I don't tell you in arrogance and pride that you're not saved. I tell you in Christian love so that you can repent of it and see the errors of your ways. Because no apostle of Jesus Christ who knew him personally, who actually heard him say to them, Go ye therefore into all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, that those apostles, not one of them ever put anyone under the water saying, I baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. No, they all baptize the same way in the name of Jesus Christ, which is for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the Holy Ghost. So receiving the Holy Ghost is something that gives us power to testify. And when we receive the Holy Ghost, we speak in a language we never learned and do not understand. It's not just a warm, fluttery feeling in our heart. It's not when we're put under the water and somebody says, okay, now you're born again. No, 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 no. We are born again when we believe the word of God and we seek to serve him in holiness. And in order to do that, we must repent. We need to know that we need a savior. We need to know that we need a savior. We cannot come to God in arrogance and pride and say, okay, well, I accept you as my personal Lord and savior. How arrogant and proud is that? And we know that everyone who is proud in heart is an abomination to the Lord our God. So let's read this in Proverbs chapter 16. Proverbs chapter 16 and verse 5. Everyone that is, is proud in heart is an abomination to the Lord. Though hand join in hand, he shall not be unpunished. So it doesn't matter how many people agree with you in your pride and your rebellion against the word of God. It doesn't matter how popular your particular denomination might be. In the church of Jesus Christ, we don't have buildings and we don't have denominations. We don't call ourselves by other names and we don't exalt men and women to be mediators between God and men. God forbid. We don't use flattering titles, and we don't believe things that are not written in the Word of God. So the Word of God says how it is we have our sins remitted, how our sins are pardoned, how we are saved from our sins. The Scripture says how that occurs, and it does not occur by the ways that are commonly taught in the religious systems of our time. Please excuse my cat, who likes to go in and out when I'm making a video for the sisters. Blessed be the name of the Lord. When we have become a Christian by being baptized in Jesus' name and filled with the Holy Ghost, or we're waiting for it, we are now in covenant with God. We are in covenant with God. And we have to let go of the things we used to do when we were in the various false religious systems of our time. And that includes overcoming blind spots. So blind spots come when we're 
proud. When we're rebellious, in other words, we don't want to do what God says. And so we're following our own will rather than God's will as it is written. So when we're proud, when we're rebellious, when we're involved in things that are not becoming of a true disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ, these things need to be washed from us as we continue in the Word of God. So the Lord Jesus Christ washes his holy bride by the word. And that is written in Ephesians chapter 5. So let's just read this. And this occurs after salvation. Ephesians chapter 5, starting in verse 25. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having any spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. So who does this washing? The Lord Jesus Christ does this washing by his word. And those who are truly disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ are washed daily in the word of God by abiding in it, reading it, and doing what it says. So this is also necessary for us to attain the kingdom. We must first repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and receive the gift of the Holy Ghost and continue in the word of God that we be his disciples indeed. This is the way of truth. It's very simple, but most people don't want it. They They prefer the religious drama and the social gatherings that the devil has created in order to give them the things of this world while giving them religious entertainment. And so it's very entertaining to sit in these various systems where there's some man or woman standing up in front of everybody, yelling and getting everybody all excited, and people are falling down and dumping oil all over one another and that sort of thing. That is vain religion, and it has nothing to do with the truth of God's word. And those who abide in the word of God know that. If you're new to this channel, I urge you, I urge you to get yourself a King James Bible and read it and begin to do what it says so that you can be washed as well. And of course, that begins by being washed of your sins and given a clean conscience before God by baptizing in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. So let's go now to understand what we would do as Christian women once we've entered into covenant with God and are walking in the word of God as his disciples. If we're starting to feel confused, it's a good indicator that we are needing to change something that we're doing that came forth from vain religion. Because we read in Isaiah, of course, that all the molten images of the heathen are wind and confusion. So it is not a requirement that we continue to be confused as we walk with Jesus Christ. Verily, those who are clinging to him and clinging to his word aren't confused. However, there are things we need to be washed of as we continue in the word of God. So when we start to feel confused, that is the time to recognize that we have a blind spot. We have a blind spot. And what do we do? Well, there's a couple things I can show you about this from the scripture. First, let's go to Job chapter 34 to understand what it is that we do when we realize that we have gotten a little bit off the narrow way or there's something that we don't see because we're feeling confused. Job chapter 34, starting in verse 32. This is what we say. Surely, well, let's read in verse 31. Surely it is meet to be said unto God, I have borne chastisement. I will not offend any more. That which I see not, teach me. Teach thou me. If So let me read this again. That which I see not, teach thou me. If I have done iniquity, I will do no more. 
Hallelujah. If I've done iniquity, I will do no more. That shows us that there are going to be times when we make mistakes, we, where we sin and we don't know it. And when we do that, we're going to start feeling separate from God. We're going to feel confused. And if we seek God humbly on our knees and say to him, that which I see not, show me. The God who created all things, who loved us enough to send his only begotten son into the world to die for our sins, that if we are buried with him in baptism and risen with him by his Holy Ghost, or we're waiting for that gift, he is surely going to show us our errors, but we must ask him to. God is not going to chase us around trying to point out what we're doing wrong. What he will do, though, is if we're making a mistake, he will allow us to feel confused, like we're not close to him, like something's wrong. And when we feel that way, that indicates that there's something we need to be washed from, that there's something we're not seeing. And in order to see it, we must ask God to show us that thing. Hallelujah. Let's go now to Psalm 19, and I will close with this. Psalm 19. And let's begin reading in verse 9. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, yea, than much fine gold, sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. Moreover, by them is thy servant warned, and in keeping of them is great reward. This, of course, is talking about the word of God. When we fear God and we want to know what pleases him and what doesn't and who he is and the way of salvation, we understand that we get that from the Holy Scripture. And we would recognize a liar in, in that someone who wants to exalt themselves as the mediator between us and God instead of offering us the word as I offer unto you today, my sisters. Moreover, by them is thy servant warned, and in keeping of them there is great reward. Verse 12. Who can understand his errors? Cleanse thou me from secret faults. So we have secret faults. There are things we don't see about ourselves, my sisters. And in order to see them and be washed of them, what do we do? We ask the Lord, Who can understand his errors? Cleanse thou me from secret faults. How are we cleansed? By abiding in the scripture doing what it says. Verse 13, Keep back thy servant also from presumptuous sins. What is a presumptuous sin? It's when we think we know something. A presumptuous sin is when we presume to know. So presume means to think we know without actually examining what the Word of God says. Presume. So we don't presume to know God in any other way than by his holy word. Keep back thy servant also from presumptuous sins. Let them not have dominion over me. Then shall I be upright, and I shall be innocent from the great transgression. What is the great transgression? It's idolatry. It's when people worship other gods, including themselves and their own ideas and the ideas of religious men who want to be worshipped as mediators between you and God, my sisters. So we don't put people in between us and God. We don't go asking other people as to what to do, unless, of course, we need to know what the Scripture has to say about it. And a man of God would point us to the Scripture so that we can understand what God has to say about it. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. So God is our Redeemer. God placed his Spirit fully 
in his only begotten son, when his only begotten son was baptized in the river Jordan. God, the Father, is in the Son. They are one. They cannot be separated. And those of us who are in Christ Jesus by baptism in his name and filled with his Holy Spirit, we are in him. We are in Jesus Christ, and Jesus Christ is in God, and the Holy Spirit of God has come to abide in us. Once that has happened, we continue in the word of God, recognizing that there are things we don't see yet that we need to see. We have blind spots. We have things we used to do that we don't want to do anymore. And those things include things like following people who exalt themselves as religious authorities, calling themselves by flattering titles. When we see that happening, we would recognize that that person has put the stumbling block of their own iniquity in front of their face. They are blinded by religious pride. We would depart from them. We would understand that all truth, all things that we think we know, all things that we need to believe, that we believe, pardon me, need to be examined in the perfect light of God's holy word. And things and people that say otherwise should be departed from. The word of God is perfect and pure and holy, and those of us who abide therein will never fall. Those, however, who like to contend with it, who like to reinterpret it, who like to go to Greek and Hebrew in order to say it doesn't really mean what it says, those people are involved in idolatry, and we would depart from them. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I remain here to serve you. If you desire salvation in Jesus' name especially, please write to me. I'd be delighted and honored to be able to help you with that. And if you are a Christian woman, baptized in the name of the Lord and filled with the Spirit, or you're waiting for it, I'm here to serve you as you seek to understand how it is a godly woman walks. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Glory be to God our Father, who has given us life and light and truth by his only begotten Son, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.